I've heard that also that as that suggestion when your child comes back with a, a, hor a horrible test, I'm a horrible person to have them verbalize. What would you say to a friend in that moment in time is similar, right? This yeah. is the very last thing. How do I help my child find their thing that's going to help them cope? They're running. Is it art? How do I help them? So I guess one question, the first thing I would ask is, are you sure they don't have one? Because sometimes what teens have is not what we expect. Um, I tell a story in the book of my daughter when she was in the college process, being so frustrated and taking a can of seltzer that was closed and shaking it and spraying it all over the backyard. Okay, that was her thing that day. It was the weirdest thing, but it brought relief and I thought did no harm. So it may be that like their thing is duct tape crafts it may be that they're like so the first question i was like is your kid really doing nothing or are they doing nothing that you've yet recognized as successful coping for them and then if it isn't then i would say to them you feel really lousy what would help you feel better like do you want to go get a candle making kit do you want to go listen to an angry playlist like do you want to go you know fetch the dog like be creative be creative yeah we can't keep our kids from getting upset like it's never going to happen and we we shouldn't want for it to but what we can do is when they are upset we can watch those moments and see if they are developing ways to express their feelings that give them relief ways to tame their feelings that give them relief we can help them develop those skills and we can take every opportunity of them feeling upset to help them create the repertoire they need for managing difficult feelings both when they're with us, and then of course also when they're out living their lives. I learned so much. I'm gonna make a little three by five card. I'm gonna put it on the computer every time I look at, it. it's gonna say steady presence, be the steady presence. And I'm gonna understand that sometimes they wanna talk. I'm gonna be there with empathy. I'm gonna be there to, to, to take it all in. I'm gonna then tell somebody else. I'm also going to be flexible that it might not be the time for them be adaptable about that. I'm going to understand that sometimes it's not, they won't handle it with expression, expressing it, but it'll be in other ways and understand that their autonomy is everything. And I love what you said about be ready. Their emotions are so big that what to us is a little thing like having the beauty product there for the facial or whatever it is, or the, the takeout that to them, it can be a really, really big thing um, to help them. So you talk about how we can help our kids, but my question is about, and I, I know this for myself and for someone who asked about it, help us tolerate that stress that they bring to us. It is so hard. It is so hard. And I will tell you, it's hard when everything's going great in your life. It's that much harder when you're having something else go on. We all have, we're, we're people too in this, right? We have our long days, we have our bad news. And so what I will say is, if you are struggling to be a steady presence for a teenager who is, you know, just being a teenager, get yourself more support. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Take good care of yourself. Like have people who can care for you. Um, ask for more help. Um, it's not easy, right? Taking care of teenagers is not easy. And they need us to try to be present and steady. And it's not always something that comes easily. You just gave me an opening for discussing next week's uh, GPS when we talk about self-care. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Larson, I know you have a question. Yeah, I, was, I was just, I was just curious. The role of friends, friends are so important. You know, kids, teenagers, sort of at times pushing away parents, wanting more autonomy, and friends become such a huge mm -hmm. uh, factor. So, any, any comments on that? Any things to be uh, wary of, or is that a good thing? I mean, you know, they are their job is to loosen their ties to us and to strengthen their ties to their age mates. That's what makes it possible for them to leave home. So we have to sort of start with that assumption. I think one of the things that's really interesting to me is that sometimes parents will feel like my kid doesn't express emotions. And you might be like, well, not to you, right? I mean, that they may express emotions a lot. They may have very rich and intense conversations with their friends about what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. That's good. Right. That's good. And I think it's hard as a parent, like we feel like we're missing out. But again, the goal is healthy expression. If they are getting relief by talking with their friends about their feelings and they don't always bring it to us, 
we have to be all about what's working for them. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lisa, last question for you. What's the, what's the one question that comes up for you all the time as we're closing out here? What's the one, the most common question you get? Um, I think I'll get, I get questions about, is it okay that my kid does this, right? Is it okay that my kid, when he's upset, goes back and reads his Captain Underpants book, even though he's 17 and has a five o'clock shadow, right? Or is it okay that, um, you know, my kid wants to break something, right? Is it okay? Like I had a family tell me about a kid who hauled home a file cabinet that somebody had put out on the tree lawn that they were done with and asked if he could keep it in the backyard. And when he was angry, he would go beat on it. And he, they were like, is this okay? And I'm like, of course it's okay, right? Brings relief, does no harm. Yes, quirky, yes, strange, but that is the standard. If it brings relief and does no harm, mm -hmm. it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On your website, you have, tell them about your website and podcast as we say goodbye. Tell them about sure, it. Sure, thank you. Um, so I have a website, it's drlisademore.com and I've tried to make it as resource accessible as possible. I have a lot of content that I hope is helpful to you. So when you go to my website and if you have a particular question in mind, um, I know there's a lot of concerns about peer relationships right now and how things are going with kids' friends. Everything in my website is organized into six categories. Like the six categories are right on the front. So it's like, you know, family relationships, mental health, peers and friends, stress and coping, school and college, stress and or some one other. I can't remember what it was, but click on that. What you will get is all the articles I've ever written on that topic, all the podcasts that we've ever done on the topic of, you know, peers, family, risky behavior. That's the other one. Um, video work I have done on this. So if you have a question that we weren't able to get to or you didn't ask tonight, um, the podcast, which comes out every Tuesday, it's called Ask Lisa, The Psychology of Parenting. I do it with my fabulous colleague, Rena Ninen. We take a parent question every week and we unpack it. It takes us about 25 to 30 minutes. They're short podcasts. And this week, I think we aired our 135th episode. So we have answered 135 questions. Um, this week's was, how do I combat my kids' perfectionism? Last week was my son uses slurs when he's with his friends. How do I get that to stop? Um, you know, so we just try to take things that are just right down the middle of what families are dealing with because um, there's always something. You know, so many people, all I'm seeing here is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to end with a big thank you, thank you, thank you. Such a treat. Already can't wait to have you come back again. This is the book that you want at your nightstand. Lisa, this is where we go hug the kids. Dr. Larson knows that we always say that. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you soon next time. Take care. Have a good evening.